right. Hi, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's um, it's fun that we get to start thinking about spring when it's when it's only February. So um, today we are doing this uh, fun floral wreath. It's on our green 12 inch extruded and oh, I didn't glue that one in. And I'm just showing you some quick ideas on how to put this together. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you some other ideas um, that you can change it up maybe for Valentine's or for Easter. So if we wanna, oh, and before I go to overhead, um, we have Mariah on chat. She's gonna field all the questions. So if there's anything you wanna see again or need me to slow down or repeat something, let her know and I'll do my best to, to answer your questions for you. Um, so if we go to overhead, I can show you guys what I found at Michael's to create this project. So this is our 12 inch extruded ring. I use our green. It also comes in white. I used our green today just because it blends so nicely with the, with the florals. Um, but you can, you can absolutely use white. We're gonna be covering it up pretty, pretty nice today. So either white or green will work for this. And then for florals, I found this white rose bush. There's, um, there's actually 11 stems on here. So if you find a smaller rose bush or a smaller uh, floral bush of any kind, I mean, this doesn't have to be roses. So whatever you find, just make sure you have about 11 or 12, I'll just say it about a two inch um, blossom on your flowers. And then these, the contrasting flowers, I found these large peonies. And again, it can be any large blossom flower. Um, these happen to be probably, I'd say a good um, four inches, five inches across on these blossoms. And this stem that I listed in the materials list has um, seven large blossoms or six large blossoms and then this little bud. But as I was going through my materials just before class started, I realized that two of the blossoms are missing. So when you're buying, if you haven't bought already, when you're buying your bush, just make sure that that none are missing on there for you. But, um, oh, looks like there's maybe three missing. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you if, um, if you don't have as many florals, there are other things you can do. You can add a little more green. You can use some of these leaves as filler. It'll still work um, just, just fine. And then as some filler, I found this little uh, faux, it looks like maybe faux baby's breath. No, it's not full baby's breath. It's some kind of little green filler with um, little white and pink um, pods on the ends. And this particular stem has, looks like it has 12 branches. So anything, any kind of filler that you can cut apart um, will work just fine for this. Dusty Miller would be really pretty in there. And then I found this pretty um, fern, uh, has a ton of fern on here and you can cut it apart. It's wired all the way to the tip. It's really nice uh, fern. So that's another filler that I used in here. And then some tools you'll need wire cutters or diagonal cutters to, um, to cut your stems. We will need a glue gun. Uh, we use low temp glue gun with our foam just because it, um, it will not melt the foam. Uh, some of the high temp guns get so hot that they, that they might melt the foam. So just make sure you're using low temp gun. And then you might need for some little pieces of greenery that you might want to attach, you might need some of these floral pins. Um, can we highlight the overhead on, on the overhead on the floor craft screen by chance? No, maybe. Anyway, 
This is a U-pin or a greening pin, they call it. Um, it's Ashland Went brand. It's over in the floral tools and it works really nice for securing things to our foam. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, you don't need a lot of stem. So I'm going to cut, you know, you don't want to go through the back edge of this wreath. So you're going to cut like maybe a one inch stem and that's going to make sure that it doesn't pop through the other side on you. And because this, um, because this stem is smooth, you might want to add a little bit of glue to the tip of the stem before you insert it in the wreath and that'll just hold it in there nice. Um, but if you do plan on switching this out, adding different flowers or um, reusing this wreath, they do hold in there pretty nice without glue. But if it's gonna go on a door or it's gonna get a lot of moving around, you might wanna, might wanna put a little glue on there. So, for those of you who have a full floral bush, um, you're just basically gonna lay these out so that they're evenly spaced. And I just start with these larger blossoms and then fill in with the smaller roses. And then I save this blast or this, um, what is it? It's a bud. I save this bud. I'm going to cut this stem a little bit longer so that it stands out a little bit from the center of the wreath. So maybe cut that at about four inches. And then we're going to probably be using a lot of these leaves and they just, they'll just pull right off. Uh, and we can glue them in or floral pin them in um, as filler if we need it. So just lay out. Are, are you looking at overhead or are you looking at, um, okay, we're good. All right. So I'm gonna poke these in evenly spaced and to give it a little bit of um, variation or a little bit of interest, you can have like, like one facing you, maybe one tipping off the edge a little bit maybe one coming in a little, just to, just to give it a little movement. So they're not all just exactly faced the same way. There we go. All right, so once you have all those guys in, we're gonna come back in with our roses. And to, to get these roses to be a little fuller, we can take the leaves. Right off there. Take the leaf that's on the stem and just slide it up so that it, um, comes right up behind the rose. And that's just gonna kind of fill in around the back side of the rose a little better. So I pull them all up to the top like that. All right, and then with these, you're gonna do the same thing, uh, about an inch. Um, if you wanna, Cut them all at the same time, cut them as you need them. So I do like two together in a spot, and kind of diagonal from each other. So you would do like that. So they're coupled together. And I do that all around between these guys. You're just doing two right 
side by side. Diagonal from each other, I guess. One kind of towards the inside. Towards the outside. Who do we have watching today? Where are people calling from? We have someone from Florida. And let's see. Texas as well. But it's warm down there. It's mm -hmm. so cold up here right now. <laughs> um, let's see. Someone from New York as well. Colorado. I wonder if they're skiing. Oregon. Um, Illinois, Connecticut, New York again, Virginia, a lot of different places. We like to nice. see that. Someone's from Michigan. That's awesome. California. We love to see everyone joining us today. So Queens, Canada. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, we have quite a few people today. Nice. So we have one more. So I'm going to leave this guy till the end. And then if there's some little spot that needs a little, then I'll shove it in there. So we're just going to set that aside for a minute. We put our little blood in the bottom and let him kind of peek up from the center like so. And then for the leaves, now for like here, um, by this bud, I might want that leaf to stand up a little higher. So let's give it about a two inch stem and poke it right down in with that blossom and let it kind of, oh, it popped off the stem. <laughs> let it kind of stand up behind that bud. And then for around by the peonies, I would just add a little glue to the base of that leaf and glue it in right next to your peonies. And we'll do that all the way around the wreath. Um, now, again, if you don't wanna glue these leaves in, cause you might wanna change your wreath up, then you take your graining pins and you just straddle your greening pin through the leaf like that. And then when you put your pin in, just make sure that you put it in at an angle to the wreath so that you're not poking right through to the other side or poking into your finger. So just lay, lay the pin, can you guys see? Can you see me, Mariah? So if you lay the pin that way and put it in at an angle towards the middle of the wreath, then you won't, it'll, it won't poke out. We'll do another one like that. So again, we just straddle the pin over the leaf like that. Take it in. And put it in at an angle into the wreath, just like that. And I'll hold it in there. And then if you want to go back later and change it out, you can do that. I'm going to add a little glue. And if you add, like if you just add that little tiny bit of glue on just the end, it's going to hold it in there, but you will be able to pull it back out. If you just use a little bit of glue, it's not like it's there forever. I'm just going to continue to go around and fill in around these peonies. And if you have all the, if you have seven on here, you might not need all these leaves, but because our, our bush didn't grow as many 
blossoms. <laughs> you need a little filler. Couple of questions. The okay. first one is what is the approximate cost of supplies to make this wreath in particular? Oh, um, geez. I don't know if Michaels can help with the materials list and look them up real quick or um, nothing comes with um, price tags on it. So I'm not, but that's a good idea to have an average cost for future future projects. And then the other question is, can you please give suggestions as to how to hang wreaths? Sure. Um, so one thing you can do is, well, you know what? I'll show you with something that you have right here in front of you. So if you take like this thing, this stem that we have a lot left of would be a good, this could be a piece of wire. This could be a piece of chenille stem, um, piece of string, piece of lots of different things you could use. But for these, um, I take it like this and make a, make a U and then take the, the cut ends of the piece and just fold them up like at a 90 degree angle like that and then put glue on the tips of both of these, probably want them the same length. So you put glue on the tips of both of these. And again, you don't want that bend to be longer than an inch because you, you don't want it to come through your wreath. But then I would just take those two prongs and just push them right into the back of the wreath. Like that. And that can be your hanger and it's green. So it will hide with your greenery. So that's one way. Um, piece of ribbon, if you, um, this ribbon I can show it. So if you have just a short, just a, say a six inch, eight inch piece of ribbon and glue, um, I would glue it to the back of the wreath and then take the uh, floral pins and maybe go like, you gotta kind of wiggle it to get it through the fabric, but I would do like a, fab, a floral pin angled in that direction and a floral pin angled in this direction, just for extra, extra. So you're not counting on just the glue to hold the ribbon to the wreath. And one in that direction. And then maybe even a little bit of glue um, to cover the backs of the pins so that it doesn't rub on your door and um, scratch your door. But cover that up or cover it up with another glue, a little piece of ribbon over the top of those so that it stays. But that would that would also be a, a hanging idea for you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to go in with this, um, this little berry filler. And these are the same. You can, you can push these all up to the tip of the stem and it makes a nice, almost like a little pick. Just fills it in real nice. And then cut off your inch stem. And now we're just going to use this to come in between all of our florals. So slide it up to the tip like that. Cut about an inch. And pop it in. And it doesn't have to be all in the same spot. And put a little bit towards the center and bring a little bit out towards the side. Again, you slide everything up. Good. 
just kind of between the peonies and the roses is kind of where I've let this filler be. I found that it's a lot easier to decorate spring reeds in the winter than it is to decorate winter reeds in the summer. <laughs> it's a lot more fun to think spring, I think. Of course, I guess it's who, whoever you are. I guess if you like winter more, then. But living in Michigan, by the time winter finally gets over, um, you're, you're really wanting it to be spring. <laughs> All right, getting all our little white filler in here. Also was a great trick, Dondi, where you slide it up. I did not know that. So I learned something today. So I appreciate that. Good, you're welcome. All right, so we're gonna save the rest of this because like I said before, with that final rose, we just might need that to just fill in here and there when we're done. So now for our fun fern, this stuff is so pretty. So for this, I came in again between the roses and the peony. And just lay that over the top of the wreath and pin it in place. Or you can glue it in. You have that option. It does glue. Glue one in and show you. So I would glue on the back side because that's where it's going to lay against your wreath. So when you slide it in there, that glue is going to touch. Oops, I just pulled my foil. Go. Couple of questions. Okay. Um, one was, what do you suggest to use with grapevine wreaths to hold flowers in place? I would, well, if your florals are kind of heavy, you might need to wire them. Um, but you can probably get away with, with just gluing them on there on the grapevine. At least these, these are pretty lightweight florals. was did you secure the larger flowers the peonies with hot glue or did you just stick them in the foam yep um so if you are going to redo this wreath and kind of switch it up maybe maybe pull out flowers and add different colors in just to switch it up as the season goes then i would just push them in and they hold in pretty nice um I mean, they will pull out, of course, because it's just smooth plastic into that foam. So there's no texture to, to grip the foam. Um, but if it's a wreath that you're going to keep and use over again, and it's going to get some use, then definitely I would add just a little bit of glue to the stem before you insert it in the wreath. Um, actually a request. So when you're all done with the um, wreath, can you show the side? They want to see how much is covered by the flowers and the, the stems. Sure. And then uh, another question we had was, how do you clean the flowers? Uh, well, they have silk plant cleaner. Um, I think actually Floracraft has a silk plant cleaner um, there at Michael's. Um, 
and I shouldn't, I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> anyway, um, that you basically just spray on and then, you know, you, you would shake the wreath and get any dirty off that you, you know, the majority of it that you can. And then um, you spray it with this silk plant cleaner and it kind of like, not really, I guess it kind of dissolves the, not dissolves it, kind of runs it off, I guess. All right, so that's just the long outside um, pieces. And then these other pieces I used, but I cut them in half. So go about part way up and cut right at the top of one of the branches. So you can get two out of one branch. And then these don't stick out so far, like the outside ones, I don't mind that they stick out that far, but in here, I kind of wanted them to be embedded a little deeper so that just the tips stick out. So again, with glue or floral pins, whichever um, works for you. But then I just use the shorter ones to just poke in here and there. So it has that texture on the inside of the wreath too. So we're just cutting the stem in half and then just using the littler pieces. Goes in wherever you think you need a little more green. So um, let's see, when is my next? April 6th, I need to do a floral centerpiece. So if you guys were to watch a floral centerpiece with foam, what would you want me to do? Give me some ideas. Anything you wanna see? All right, I guess I'm on my own. <laughs> so then um, I'm also using some of these shorter ones around the outside edge, just so that it's not, um, just to fill in between these longer ones, I will put a shorter, shorter one, just to bring that texture around. I get some ideas, Donna, if oh, you want good. me to shoot them over to you. Yes. Um, Easter or 4th of July, I've seen tulips, holidays. Tulips would be a very pretty one. Um, These are all wreaths? They yes. want to see wreaths? I'm guessing wreaths or I'm guessing this is a floral center centerpiece. Okay, centerpiece. So we could, yes. do, we could do tulips, yes, I'm sure. Tulips, absolutely. Um, they said Easter theme, um, okay. spring Easter centerpiece. So yeah, I think tulips would be a good one to nice. do maybe. So yeah, I've seen a lot of that. So, all right, good. Thank you. That's sometimes half the battle is trying to figure out what to make. Of course, a lot of the times I decide what I'm making while I'm at the store because you'll go there with an idea and then you get there and you see something on the shelf that you just can't live without. And then you're like, okay, now I gotta do this. I have that problem a lot at Michael's. You just probably have so many ideas going through your head, Dondi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, centerpiece with candles. Oh, so do a floral centerpiece with maybe like 
two, nice. one, yeah. two or three candles in it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Candles are always pretty. They have a nice selection there too. All right, we're just filling in between all these little outside long guys with these shorter half pieces just to bring that texture around the outside. And then anywhere that you see that it might need a little more green filler, you just glue another piece in or pin, whatever your choice is. Lift this up so I can see what I'm doing here. You guys wanted to see the side, so you can see a little. Um, there are, there's a lot more of this and a little more of this and a few more leaves. So between the three of those, I think you could go in and um, fill in around that edge. So if you would put some in like that, just those few extra leaves. And that green on that wreath doesn't show real um, that much from the, from the front, of course. So like I said, you could use your greenery. Another thing you can use if you, um, if you want to, to pin on to the side of the wreath to cover it up is floral moss. Floral moss or Spanish moss around the outside edge. Both of those things would work real nice to hide that foam if that's what you would like to do. So this is kind of it for, for the finished wreath um, as, it, as it stands right now. Um, so a couple of things that you could do to to bring it in to Valentine's Day. How much time do we have? Oh, we have lots of time. To bring it into Valentine's Day. So all I did with these, so this is our, um, it's our one inch. This, this happens to be, uh, I think it was our 12 by 18 by one inch thick foam. So it's just our white foam sheet. So all I did was cut out, actually I cheated and I used a metal uh, cookie cutter. Put that out of way for a minute. So I used a metal cookie cutter poked it through. Now you don't have to use a metal cookie cutter. It's just super quick. You can use a, you know, draw your heart on your foam and cut it out with a steak knife or a little handsaw. Um, I've done videos with our uh, clean cut cutter. So this is a USB heated cutter um, that you could cut the foam out with. Um, a couple of our past videos, I use this so you can check it out, but it's a fun little tool. And it makes a nice clean edge. So anything you use to cut these out. So this is of course gonna be one inch wide. So then you're gonna take your knife or your cutter and you're just gonna cut it in half so that it's half inch thick. And then you'll have two hearts. So all I did was take the heart, I glued it to a skewer, and then I took different shades of, uh, this happens to be colored jute, but you could use baker's twine, you could use yarn, um, embroidery thread, anything you want to decorate them. So literally just wrap them up with some yarn and Figure out where you want them in your wreath. There. 
Okay, maybe this one could nest straight down in there. So we're gonna cut him pretty short. And he could be right down low. Then maybe this one standing up a little higher. We'll put this one there. And again, these will poke in, but if you want them to be in there a little more secure, then for sure, give them a little glue before you pop them in there. Something like that could be cute for Valentine's. I have a question about the hearts. Uh, okay. They asked, what was the best paint to use with our craft foam? Uh, paint? Mm -hmm. Acrylic. Mm -hmm. Any acrylic craft paint will work beautiful with our foam. Um, you can use spray paint. The thing about spray paint is you want to make sure that you hold the spray paint can at least 14 inches away from the surface of the foam while you're painting. And that'll make sure that it's not gonna eat the foam, the spray paint won't eat the foam because what's eaten the foam is the propellants in the can. So if you hold it far enough away, it won't, um, it's not gonna melt that foam for you. And another thing when you're using spray paint is don't try to, don't try to saturate it and get it real wet with a heavy first coat. Do a, do a light first coat and let that first coat dry a little bit and then add more color to it to get your desired color rather than trying to saturate the foam because that could eat it too. But um, any brush on acrylic will work great with our foam. All right, and then, so that would be a cute Valentine addition. And then maybe, Maybe another addition could just simply be a bow. So, do I have a tie? Let me grab a tie. So any tie for a bow is gonna work. This um, happens to just be some really thin, this is like 26 gauge um, paddle wire, but um, you could use yarn, you can use dental floss for that matter, anything to secure it together. But so I always start out, I figure out how long my tail is gonna be. And I think I'm gonna make a short tailed bow and it's just gonna live right at the top of the wreath. So I'm gonna say about maybe a four inch tail. So you're gonna wrap your ribbon to the back and you're gonna pinch it together. So you have your tail in the front and you loop to the back. And then I just like to get that tail out of the way. So then you have your second bow and you're gonna bring that to the front and get your thumb under there and then give it a twist. And that twist puckers that bow so that um, it stands up a little nicer for you. And then if you wanted to do four loops, you just go again, bring that to the center, give it a twist, and bring up your last loop, give it a twist. And then for the center, you're just gonna make a tiny, tiny loop. So almost right over the top of your fingers like that. And then make sure that your tail is flipped the right way. Kind of tuck that under your thumb. And there you have it, cute little bow. And remember this is being recorded. So in 24 to 48 hours, you can, uh, jump on Michael's YouTube site and watch this bow all over again. So you're just gonna thread your 
wire through the center of your bow in between your tails and out the back. And then just twist everything super tight. Just like so. And then cut off my ribbon tails about the same height length. And then I'm gonna give it a little dovetail just because it seems like I always do. <laughs> just finishes it off nice, I think. All right, there's your little bow. Tutorial. <laughs> What's so that? They love the mini bow tutorial. So okay. that was a good addition. So. All right. so then I would just either glue or floral pin or T pin or something that right into the center. Um, you catch, catch a couple just a little bit of that back, two back loops maybe. And, and you might wanna glue your pin in place too. So that would be fun just as a little addition. It kind of makes it a little, little cute, little, little more cutesy for Easter. Uh, you could add little faux Easter eggs in there, um, glittered Easter eggs instead of doing the little hearts, you could do little Easter egg shapes and, and decorate them with, with yarn or twine also would be cute. Can you open it to mind? You can just hold the wreath up or just hold it for a second so they can get a snapshot of it. They want it to kind of get a good... uh, up, up in front of me. Like yeah, can we switch that to overhead? Thank you. Yeah, and then whoever wants to take a snapshot, um, go ahead and do that Get now. Out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. That Again, works. everyone said so beautiful. They love the mini bow. I think the eggs being glittered is a great idea. That's I'm a big glitter person. So <laughs> I think the glitter is a great idea. So another thing you can do, I'm just, just because we have a little bit of time or actually maybe I'll show, I'm going to show, um, I'm going to show this first. And then this is the one we did last week, you guys. And um, the, the link should be in the chat. And just because we still have, you have, still have time to do a Valentine wreath before Valentine's, right? So I did this one last week. So if you want to jump on and, and watch how we did that, it's on Michael's uh, uh, wreath form, wood wreath form. And then we cut out the hearts, just like I showed you with the little hearts with a cookie cutter or any of the tools that I mentioned earlier. And then florals on little half uh, foam balls. So fun little project for, for Valentine's. And then coming up next, no, coming up next on March 23rd, we're gonna do this. It's um, basic floral arranging. So just a fun idea for a uh, um, floral arrangement. And then I'm going to show you some other ways that you can uh, change this arrangement up and use it in different ways. So if you only have a few flowers, another fun way I don't know if there's enough of that. Oh, not enough of either one of these. So if you don't have a ton of florals, but you still want a pretty floral wreath on your door, a fun way to get a full wreath, but, um, not have to fill the entire surface is to wrap it halfway with ribbon. So you'll secure one end of the ribbon to the back of the wreath and then kind of at an angle, I'm just gonna start wrapping this ribbon about halfway around. 
and I might not have enough ribbon to get very far, but you guys will get the idea. And then So if we get this slightly overlapped and we go about halfway around, we can take the florals and just decorate just half of it and have a pretty bow and still have a pretty floral wreath on your door. The ribbon you're using now, is that wired ribbon? This is, um, it is wired ribbon. Um, this is two and a half inch. And I can't remember when I bought this, but it is celebrated. Okay. Do you so prefer there, wired ribbon over non, depending on what arrangement you're doing or? Yep. I would use, I, I love to use wired for my bows for sure. Uh, for wrapping, actually, it doesn't have to be wired. It, it almost kind of gets in the way, but um, it just happened to be what I had here on the table. But um, so for wrapping the wreath, doesn't have to be wired for bows. It just, it makes a really pretty bow when you do, you do use wired. So then, yeah, for something like this, I would just decorate just the same exact way that we did with the, um, with the peonies and the roses but you would only have to decorate just the half. And then you could have the florals at the base of the wreath, put the bow at the top, or you can have the florals at the top of the wreath kind of trailing down and maybe the bow at one side or the bow at the bottom. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. So any last questions before we... Is there anything else they wanna see? How long are the floral pins and do they poke through the other side of the wreath? Yes. Uh, so these are, I'm going to say they're about two inches. So they're about a two inch pin. Well, our wreath is, is not, I mean, it, it might, peek, it would probably peek out the other side. So what I do when I use the, the pins is just make sure that they go in at an angle like that. And that the end, that way the ends stay right inside the wreath. Um, now with thicker stems, when you poke it in and you have a stem under there, it's not going to go through the other side because that stem has taken up that much space. So, but like putting in the leaves where there's, there's hardly anything under the pin, just, just make sure that you put them in at an angle, kind of lay them down at an angle and, and slide them in, and then they're not gonna poke through for you. All right, is that, uh, is that gonna cover it, everyone? Yes, everyone said very cute, great ideas. They loved the bow and they loved everything that you showed them today. So awesome. everyone's really excited. And we already had someone say that they're going to sign up for another class. So the next one, so oh, nice. very exciting. Oh, good. All right. Well, here they are side by side, guys. Um, and then also the little the little hearts were in there if you wanted that or, or egg shapes as well. Um, but again... Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for making it fun with Floor Craft and we'll see you next time.